Um, Ray, uh, Mike mentioned some of the challenges that, um, that GPO faces. Um, talk about some of the challenges that you see uh, Federal Register trying to address with Federal Register 2.0 and what you see sort of the development pathway beyond there. Okay, we uh, want to uh, get all of our publications uh, converted into XML, and we've got a plan. We've worked out with our GPO partners uh, to do that over the next couple of years. Uh, we mm -hmm. want to get the rest of the Federal Registers into XML, the 94 to 99 period. We want to get all of the CFRs from about 97 when they first uh, went online up to the current. I think we've got about 10 years worth of, uh, of those uh, ready now and, of course, about 10 years worth of the Federal Register that are available uh, in bulk uh, XML. We want to move back to for all of our legacy publications. Uh, at our offices on North Capitol Street, we have a unique uh, regulatory library there which has uh, substantial primary legal materials dating from the 1800s. We would love to see that converted and made available. There are no copyright issues with the material that is in our library, but we've got uh, compilations of presidential material, executive agency material, uh, the statutes uh, from Congress, and other sources that would be uh, of, of great public interest if, uh, if and when we're able to get that converted and, uh, and made available freely on the Internet. Uh, I, I think we're fast approaching a day where we can see the beginning of the regulatory timeline to the end uh, in the sense of creation of a rule to publication in the Federal Register and the dynamic that that offers for public involvement, for public participation. Uh, I would love to see us be able to do something with that over the next few years. We've got our own internal uh, production tool uh, which we use to receive uh, submissions from agencies to complete edits on to align with the Code of Federal Regulations and then to hand off to our GPO partners for them to compose and produce in its uh, final version. We'd love to see that cycle from beginning to end unified so that the production tool and the public interface can become one and the same. Uh, I, I think the, the opportunities are virtually endless. Uh, the challenges, I think, are now that we have our data in XML, more challenges of imagination and effort than they are of anything else. There, there's one other that I would like to add, and, and that's the, uh, the point in time system of ECFR. Uh, it's one of the things that we have an ECFR system today, which is the essentially the daily snapshot of the Code of Federal Regulations. One thing that uh, well-structured data is going to allow us to do, and there's a lot of work that's going to be involved, but it'll be able to provide that point-in-time system so that you'd be able to dial back to a date and see what the Code of Federal Regulations was on a particular date, something of, uh, I think, very high value that, that Ray and I talk about quite often as we um, know that we, from our strategy perspective, need to, to move forward with this publication support system that he just mentioned, as well as a point-in-time system for the CFR. Great. We have about five minutes remaining. I'm going to open up the floor to questions. Carl. So how much did you pay the GovPulse guys to do all this development? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know team? the answer. <laughs> was a cost. So do I, for, I don't know what it was. Yeah. Right. What? Uh, Pulse was built uh, for the Sunlight Labs contest, um, and so the, the GPO didn't pay anything for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yes, down there. What would be the most helpful thing 
what would be the most helpful thing that the community could build for the Federal Register? For, for me, I think the next challenge, and, and uh, I'm inspired by Beth on this point, is public participation. And by public, I mean that part of the public which is an infrequent user of Federal Register information. Uh, we know the big guys are going to take care of themselves, but I think they're small businesses, as we've heard about earlier. There are a lot of other uh, interested uh, uh, participants that uh, we can make this easy for them to get involved. And I think, I think that's a big challenge, and I think it's also a great opportunity. I was uh, really struck by the fact that you also have a library of all sorts of other things that um, uh, are not uh, yet publicly available, and you're thinking about um, you know, possible partners maybe to work with to make that information available, sure. or I'm sure there's, you know, throughout the government, there are all these kinds of libraries that exist, all these kinds of repositories of information. Uh, one great thing about having such a group of folks together here at this Law.gov event is that we can start thinking about how we can all work together. Uh, one, to find out what's there, which I think is the first problem. Um, who has what and where it is, and then how we can work together to make it available. And if you have suggestions, uh, that would be a fun conversation to have. Okay, we're, we're looking for partners, so. One thing to add to that, um, on the, the retrospective conversion of, of content, there's been a lot of good work that's been done in creating, again, a standard or a reference for what the, the um, requirement would be to create what we call a, a preservation standard of a, a document, so how you scan it, et cetera, and the technical aspects of it. Um, it's been, a, a, I think, a very effective and uh, successful exercise and in our work with the Library of Congress um, we've been looking at content that they've scanned, particularly of the statutes at large, and it, it's working very well, and we're able to parse that um, into very usable data that, that conforms with uh, the format of what we already have in federal digital system on the statutes at large. So that's, I think, an existence proof and an example of what could be done. Now, I think with a community like this, if um, we have a standard that we can reference and we talk about uh, participation with providing content with that standard, uh, we have the basis for actually processing the data and making it easily accessible. So I think some good pieces are, are available and falling into place that we could, we could leverage. Great. Um, with that, please uh, join me in thanking uh, Ray and Mike for their insightful comments. Um, and uh, that concludes this panel.